Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I am going to be showing you guys how I film and edit my videos and also my setup and the gear that I use. Um, I have actually had a lot of people ask me about doing this video since I did my last video, which was how I got monetized on YouTube and how you guys can get monetized on YouTube and kind of how the process works. So I'll go ahead and link that up here so you can check it out. But I had a lot of different people ask me to do a video on how I edit, film, the stuff I use, thumbnails. I'm not going to be adding the thumbnail section into this video because I feel like this video is already going to be kind of long. So I don't want to extend it out any further than it needs to be. So that video will be up for you guys um, it may not be this week but I will get it up shortly what I am going to be doing in this video is I'm going to show you right either down here or here or somewhere I'm going to put another little video basically of me editing my video and how I do it so if you guys are interested in how I edit film and the gear I use then go ahead and hit that subscribe button at the bottom of this video and we'll get started all right so before we get started on what I'm currently using because here's the thing, when I first started my YouTube in December of 2018, if you go back and look at my videos, like you will notice the whole background is completely different, the camera footage is different, so I wanna show you the things of where I started, so that way if you guys are using these similar things, you know that they will work, and what basically I found to be the cheapest, an alternative to a camera and whatnot. So I recorded originally on my iPhone. I do have the iPhone XS Max, so it has really, really good quality. And I used the back of the camera instead of the front of the camera so I could get even better quality. It does shoot in 4K, but what I will tell you from the one time I did it, I overheated my my phone so don't do that um, I don't recommend that if you're really really interested in 4k then I would just really really save up for a camera that way you don't overheat your electronics so I got this and this is I have the name here because it has a really weird name this is the U rig pro smartphone rig stabilizer and it's 1995 on Amazon. I really only use this for my TikTok right now because I don't really use my phone for filming anymore. But what it does is like literally it expands and you can put your phone in here and you can record this way. Like I put it on a tripod down here or you can put a try you can put it on the tripod this way if you want like a um, up and down video, but obviously for YouTube usually you want it to be horizontal. So I go ahead and put it on the tripod here and then I would just stick my phone in here and tighten it up and it would film me through here. I will list down below everything I got and the links to where I got them. Most of this was from Amazon. This handheld, tri this handheld tripod, um, I'm gonna have to figure out where, I oh no, this one came with my Canon. Um, I got a kit with my camera and this actually came with it. So this is just one that I use either for TikToks or I use it for vlogging or I'm going to be use it for going to be using it for vlogging and basically like it tilts all the way down and then this also spreads so if I want to place it or I want to bend it around something like this is really really cool I'm sure they have one like this on Amazon honestly I would definitely recommend if you're going to be vlogging to have a handheld tripod so you're not carrying your camera around so but I used this before I got a real tripod and I would put it on top of books. Well, not one like this. It was similar, but it was little balls. And I would put it on top of books with my phone on it and I would record that way. I'm telling you, when I tell you I had the cheapest, like, just set up, it was legit, like, the cheapest. So I also had, and I will go ahead and put a picture right down here because I no longer have it. It's a connector for the iPhone, so it had the lightning piece, and then it also had a mic um, jack, and then it also had an HDMI jack. So basically what I would do is I would hook my mic into that and hook it into the iPhone, and then I would hook the HDMI cord into that and then into a TV monitor. So I could see myself, since I was recording backwards, I didn't have, like my camera has, a mirror on it or a, a screen on it, so I wasn't able to see that. And the mic I used, was actually one of those like clip on little mics. I think that was like $14. I don't have the price on here, but again, like I said, I'll go ahead and link all that down below. But it was a 20 foot clip on mic I got from Amazon. And that, it worked really, really well. However, I had it for a couple of months and then it stopped working. So I couldn't really use it anymore. Um, 
Also, I'm, I am getting new equipment. I have actually been saving up to get new equipment, so, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, but I'm talking about past equipment right now. But the only problem is with that mic is it only lasted a couple months. I don't know what happened. It only lasted just a little bit, and then it stopped working, like, out of nowhere. And also, when I would be, like, either moving stuff or my shirt would move or something because it was clipped onto my shirt, you could hear all that. So, if you can't afford a, like a boom mic or a stick mic or anything like that or a shotgun mic then definitely use that as an alter alternative because it was really really good it's just it didn't last long and it picked up a whole bunch of unnecessary sound so I'm gonna go ahead and put down here a video of like my lighting setup just a quick like overview of it I have two box soft box lights um, from Amazon and I also had I think it's yeah the diva ring light supernova 18 inch dimmable that was $249 I know that they have some other cheaper alternatives I've seen DIYs of them but honestly that was probably my greatest investment this light is literally amazing let me turn it off and show you the difference like these lights are great and all the box lights but the difference in what this ring light does for me and for my videos is just completely outstanding. So if anything, I would save on getting the box lights until you can afford them um, and get the ring light. I know it's expensive, so save, save, save. But I promise you, I love that I can dim it. Like I can go all the way down or I can go all the way up, which is completely unnecessary, but it's something that you can do. It also came with a tripod in a bundle. I did have to pay for the tripod. It was $19, it's the Cowboy Studio tripod. If I could pick a different tripod, I would, and I probably will be getting a different one because I just don't care for it. It's kind of like loose a lot. And if it drops my $249 light, I'm gonna I'm gonna cry. Because it did not actually come with it. It you know how like if you go at the bottom of Amazon it says, would you you know, would you like to get this and this for a discounted? That's what I did. I didn't get them separate, I got them together. And it also comes with a like side metal piece that you can stick you could stick that little thing on the stabilizer that I was showing you, or you could stick your camera on it and pull it forward. I prefer a separate tripod for my camera simply because I feel like I get a little bit more range of motion and how I like things. But if you don't have another tripod or you don't have the space for two tripods, you can always stick it right on the back of the um, ring light and slide it forward or move it back however you prefer. As for the lights, um, actually there were three of them. Um, I had a hair light. And because I um, record in front of a white background and I do have black hair, it's quite unnecessary for me to have a um, hair light per se. But if I were doing it on a colorful, back colorful background or like on my previous background when I had all my makeup and noise in the back, you really couldn't like see me versus everything in my background. So the light kind of made me stand out. But it came with three lights, three light bulbs and carrying cases and that was for like $90. So that's really not bad. Amazon has some really, really good studio lighting for beginners. Also, I use the Boya 3.5 millimeter mini shotgun mic, which was $39. It's really, really nice. It seems to pick up audio very well. It doesn't pick up all that when I'm moving around. Okay, and so the last two things, um, in the shot of the lights, you saw that pink desk. That literally is like a $10 desk from Walmart. I have two of them, a green one and a pink one. I used to use too, because when I had the TV monitor set up when I was recording on my phone, I would put the TV there. And honestly, it's good for now. I would not recommend this if you have the space for an actual desk or a bigger, sturdier table because this thing's kind of wobbly. It's not very big. Um, so you're kind of limited as to what you can do with it but it works for now. Like I said, $10 at Walmart. If you're not making any money on YouTube, I'm not saying, oh my God, don't waste your money. No, invest. If you have the money, invest in yourself. I did, I still am. Like I'm growing. As I'm growing, my gear and my equipment are growing. But when I first started, it was my phone, some lights, um, a cheap mic, and books holding my uh, phone up. So I'm telling you, I promise you don't have to get it all right now. The last item that I use is my camera, of course. I just used the T7i, it's the 800D Canon Rebel EOS. I did get it in a kit, this fancy little kit right here, and I will honestly tell you, I don't use 99% of the stuff that comes in here. Like, it comes with, like, 
all kinds of stuff. I think I paid like $649 with tax and shipping, $609 without all that. Like it just comes with different gadgets and lenses and pieces that I'm not really educated enough to know what they all do. So I don't use them. Um, I'm sure one day I'll figure it out. My husband really gets into like that kind of stuff, but I don't really care to um, figure it out as long as the camera films me. That's pretty much all I'm looking for. Um, and it does do really great. It has a flip out. And I'll go ahead and I will put a little video down here just showing you the camera. Do not mind my floor. But <laughs> it's basically, it's the 18 to 55 millimeter lens, the one that comes with it. It's the mic that I attach into it. And it does have an HDMI port, but I don't connect it to a computer yet. And like I said, it does have that flip around camera so I can see myself, the viewfinder, and it has a bunch of other different like options. Um, but other than that, that is the equipment that I use. So we're gonna move on to the filming. Oh, another, I guess, gear that I use is my iPad Pro. So this is the newest one that they have released. It's the smaller version of it though. This is 11 and something inches. They have a 12.9, but I felt that that was way too big for an iPad. So I just didn't, I didn't get it. I will tell you that the editing software that I use is Apple only. I actually just found that out today. I was not aware that it is not available on Android. So if you have an Android phone or product, this video or this portion of the video is probably not gonna help you. I don't wanna make you sit here for nothing. Um, I don't have any Androids. My husband has an Android, but he does no video editing on his phone. So I really couldn't give you advice on how to do that. And I'm really sorry. So if you are leaving now because you have an Android, I love you. And I hope you guys find what you're looking for with your phone. All right, so the iPad. So on my iPad, I use, I, this one's cracked by the way, so don't judge it. Um, I use what's called Luma Fusion. So actually a coworker of mine was the one that got me, I'm trying not to blind you guys, that got me hooked onto this because I had no idea that it even existed. Now it does cost money, this app is not free. When I downloaded it a year or so ago, I wasn't using it on my iPhone originally. This was actually when I got my iPad. So whenever this iPad came out is when I got it. I think it was like a year or so ago. It was $20. I just looked at the Apple Store and it's $29.99, which it's still not that bad. It's not free like iMovie. iMovie is free. So if that's something you have, you can make it work. Just do some research on how to do it. However, I decided to go with LumaFusion. So I'm gonna go ahead and while I'm talking, screen record, what I'll probably do is overlay this instead of doing like in the corner so you can actually see what I'm doing. And now we're going to go into Luma Fusion. So this is basically what I see. You have the screen that will actually hold the videos on the right, and then you have the screen on the left that gives you all the options of different things you can import, whether it be photos, videos from different albums. So where this says press plus to create your first project. So I press that and then you can either name it. I don't usually name it. Um, frame rate is usually 30. You can go higher if you want. And I do 16.9 landscape, which is the YouTube format. However, if you're doing for IG um, TV or if you're doing for just IG, like Instagram itself, you can do a square. So it's really up to you and what project you're working on, but I always go 16.9, which is landscape. And then you hit that plus and that's gonna give you your tracks. So I go ahead and I import I'm just gonna do this one and please ignore, this is unedited. This is raw footage of me that you guys do not get to see. So please ignore that. So what I'll do is I will import from videos and then I have this, yep, that's me sneezing. So basically what this does, you can obviously just like on any other editing app, minimize it or you can legitimately like I zoom it, especially if I'm doing Instagram videos, I will literally zoom it out to like nothing so you can see um, the sound and whatnot. So I'm gonna go here and so over here, you have the levels of sounds for each track and it does give you, I believe, six tracks. So meaning when I do this, when I edit my videos, so I'm gonna show you this. So basically I'll go through and I will play it. And then obviously I see I'm sneezing. <laughs> And so I'll get to where I want to be and there's more sneezing 
And sometimes editing, it's the hardest part. Like filming is cool and all, but editing is so hard because you really have to like get it right. And also when I'm filming, it goes one-on-one. -on -one. Like if I mess up something, I'm like, oh crap, if I'm editing, am I able to just snip that out? Or do I have to 100% redo that whole line? Like it is acting, 110% acting. So it's really hard. So like here I started, so I'll go ahead and I will actually delete that I'll cut that clip you can go ahead and split the sound and then you can mute it on that track so it won't play so let's delete this one so I can show you that it mutes it so you can mute like the whole thing and then there's nothing there so obviously like you have the soundtrack here a lot of people will split it but I just don't prefer to do it that way um, because I feel like I'm gonna get messed up and I like to go like this and like if you look here there's a lot when it goes up and then it goes down for a long time. That down means that there was no talking. There might have been sound from something, but like this, this whole gap means there's no talking. So I'll come here and I'll cut here and I'll cut here. And a lot of the times between my talking, I like to go, um, or, uh, or I pause a lot. So it's not very cohesive or like smooth. So I will clip them out so they kind of, going on with my nose so it plays just a lot better so a lot of the times when I pull clips in I will pull in an hour 45 minutes maybe an hour and a half worth of clips and I want to get that down to no more than like 25 minutes and that is a lot so if I could get them down to further that would be great I just haven't mastered that skill yet of editing or filming to where I can edit like completely. A lot of the times when I'm doing my makeup, I will talk about things that I find important or that I find that you guys will find interesting. And I'm like, well, I can't cut that out, but also I've been blending my eyeshadow for 16 minutes, I need to do something. So it just becomes kind of like a practice makes perfect kind of thing. Like if you go back and look at my editing verse now, it is definitely improved. I'm not saying I'm a professional, but I have definitely improved. And that's all that matters is that you are improved improving with your skill and then also I want to show you I have all these awesome different options you can do overlays to where like you could put a title or like usually if I mess up something and I'm like oh crap I meant $25 I can always take this and put it down here and then obviously you can edit the fonts the sizing and the different style you want it and you can also edit like where it is. So then going back to that on your original track, say I want it to be like something I need cut out. I can zoom this in, I can move this over. You can zoom it out, but you're gonna have a black screen. So I don't recommend doing that. But like when I put the video over these videos that I'm doing like right now, how you'll get videos in the corner of my video, what I'll do is I'll put another video on top and just make it small like this. So you'll see the big video in that black space and the regular video will be there you can also tra have it transition where it like pans left or whatever and then again just cropping sizing fit mode all of that fun stuff so we have transitions i can put different transitions in the one thing that i would definitely say is i wish that they had more transitions because they don't have very many at all and it's like i paid an okay amount to maybe have like a little bit more transitions um also i can add photos to it so if i want to do photo overlay of like looks or something to kind of give you guys like an example um, I can do that. So for instance, I'll go to all photos. All right, so here's a photo and it put it there. So what I'll do is I'll go here, you can edit it and then I can make it smaller. So if I just wanna have like a photo of some kind of example there and I can obviously stretch this out to either go longer than two seconds, two seconds, however long I want it to be but it definitely just pops that up there. I can also add sounds. So a lot of the times YouTubers will add sounds when they pop up their socials or they pop up their subscribe. I have stopped doing that simply because I don't find that it's necessary to get your guys' attention, especially if I'm saying, hey, subscribe, and I'm pointing to the corner. I don't feel like I need to put an obnoxious noise over my voice. Um, so when I go here and I go to photos, and I go to albums and then pick monkey is where I have my socials so basically I made this on pick monkey and I can do a video for you on that because or I can do that during my thumbnail 
just because that's gonna take a little bit too. I made the background transparent. So basically I go to my favorites cause you can have all these favorites and I go to socials and it literally puts it exactly where I have it for most of my videos. If I wanna move it, I always have that option, but then it pops up and then I'm good to go. And I usually make it about four seconds instead of two. So you guys have enough time to read it. And then we go to the subscribe button. And I just got this from Google, honestly. And then I go to favorites because I've already edited this and it's subscribe logo. And it literally puts it right in the corner of the video where I like it to be. There is sounds, it's called story blocks. And I had it for a little while. And I think it cost me like 10 to $20. It's in there somewhere. I'm pretty sure it was like $9.99 or $19.99. Either way, I stopped using it. There are free sound effects, but there are not very many. So I'll go ahead and play this one. Oh gosh, see what I mean? Like if someone had that in their video, that would give me such anxiety. So I just don't put a lot of sound effects in my stuff. Um, so there are free stuff, but the rest of it you have to pay for and it's a monthly membership. Um, honestly, I would say if you want to put sounds, find them on YouTube and then just download them. I wouldn't pay for it. It just honestly wasn't worth it to me. If you have sounds um, already on your computer that are not copyrighted, I cannot stress that enough, not copyrighted, you can add them. If you do, your video will be flagged and it cannot be monetized. So just remember that. So I use another app called Docs, uh, Documents, and that's how I get my YouTube sounds. So like this video playback, 30 popular sound effects, sorry. It's her whole YouTube. So it just gives you like different things and sounds that you can cut and add and sound effects. And basically what I do is I go to browser. Let's do a YouTube link. I need to get to YouTube. So I go no copyright music or sound effects or whatever it is. And then I will quite literally copy this get out of YouTube, go back to my documents, paste the link and I hit go. And this is free. You can download it or you and pay like a monthly subscription for them, but you can also just download it with lower quality. And I hit download now. It might take a few minutes to download, but basically, so it'll download in here and then I will send it over and then I can literally just take those sounds and then just decide what sound I want and cut it. So like this portion, if I just wanna cut this portion and keep that, and then I just hit play and then boom. Like that's, that is the sound that I have and now the rest of it's gone. You can obviously, like I can duplicate it. I have the option to do that. I have the option to cut it super, super small if I really just want like a millisecond of it. Like literally, that look how small that sound is. Like so much you didn't even hear it because it's, there's nothing there. So that's another option. And again, you get different layers. I think you only get three sound layers, but you do get six other tracks, like video tracks. So you can put on your overlays, like your socials, your subscribe button, videos, or anything else you can think of. Um, I do always end my video with a transition. That way it does not just abruptly end. So I'll go ahead and I'll delete that. And then my favorite for a transition is dip. And the reason that I like it is because it literally just kind of goes. And I'll bring it so it's a little bit less than a second. And then that, and then it's just really nice. And like you can put something overlay if you want. But honestly, this is the easiest app to freaking use. And then once I'm done that, like say this is all done, I wanna use this, I will literally hit this movie. You have the option here to do audio only, but don't do that because if you're doing a YouTube video, you want to have visual. And then you're gonna hit movie. You can do this directly to YouTube, but I don't prefer to do it that way. You can send it to your Dropbox. OneDrive, and then I usually go photos, make sure you have enough space needed. It will tell you the space needed to export it and how much space available. I usually do the stars, so, cause that's basically them saying this is the best quality or the best choice for this. You can always do different options, it's up to you. Again, that's just really on you and what your preferences are. But I always like to just go with what they've starred because obviously they know what they're doing or it's just the electronics saying this is the best way to do it. I don't really know, it might be a conspiracy, but then I hit that button and it's writing the movie. 
So basically while this is happening, you cannot close out a luma fusion i will tell you that's something that's kind of annoying through that editing process you can swipe out of it like i did to go to the documents um download there's just so many different options and favorites and just this is literally one of the best movie or video editing apps out there right now at least for apple that is on mobile devices so obviously final cut adobe premiere are going to be like your top go-to for actual computers but as for mobile devices this is amazing i paid 20 dollars this you guys if you get it it's 29.99 you basically just make it your own like there's so many different things you can do man like if i wanted to transition that for an instagram video that always works out really well and then there's like these funky little ones that you can always do just for fun. So they're weird, but look at that. That's pretty freaking cool. So I could put that like on TikTok or something. Um, there's just a lot of options that you have that it, you can't get on iMovie is what I'm saying. iMovie is free and that's great, but I would pay that $30 just to have a little bit better of an app so if you guys have more questions about luma fusion i'm going to go ahead and shut that down if you have more questions about luma fusion you can always leave them in the comment section below and i will answer them in case i didn't touch base i just wanted to basically show you the basics of the editing app that i use simply because i know that imovie can be kind of eh, not so great it's good for beginners but there's something better that's not very like expensive that i want you guys to know about it and also I have LumaFusion on my phone so I can edit on the go I can just literally so I have an SD reader by the way I take this the SD card out of my camera I put the SD reader in here which is the C plug one I plug it in pop that SD card import my videos and then literally they're on here I do delete them every time just because I don't want to keep up and mess up like all the storage but I can also airdrop it to my phone. So say I'm like, crap, I don't want to take my iPad today or whatever. Or it's just an IG video. I've basically edited most of it. I will export it and then I will just go here and finish up any last minute touches I have. So you have every option that you have on the iPad on the iPhone. So if you don't have an iPad, you don't have to go get a $1,200 iPad. If you have an iPhone, you can get LumaFusion. It's the same price. You could do everything, it's just smaller. If you have Android, I'm sorry I wasn't very much help to you. If you stayed around anyways, you're really freaking awesome because you didn't have to do that and I really love you for that. So I hope this video helped you guys. If you guys have any further questions on the gear I use, on my setup, on how I film, on my editing software, on anything that I use, go ahead and comment that below and I will help you one-on-one -on -one down in the comments. That way your issue or your concern or what you're wondering is being helped directly instead of indirectly to everybody. So I started with a crazy background that I absolutely hated for the longest time but I made it work because I had no room so don't be discouraged if you don't have all the fancy things because I still don't have all the fancy things you're gonna get there and you're gonna do great make sure you guys give this video a big thumbs up I hope I hope I hope it helped if I'm missing anything that you wanted to know please comment below and I will help you one-on-one -on -one. and as always guys I love you and I'll see you on the next one bye